Hey folks, in this week's installment of the lesson series, we're going to talk about the circle of fifths, intentional practice, and the blues. All right, so let's jump into it. This guitar is tuned to open G or Spanish tuning, which is D, G, D, G, B, D. This is the first string. This is a sixth string. Now I'll tell you, this week's lesson is going to be less about me teaching you a bunch of licks and things and more about teaching the concept of how are we going to learn the neck of this guitar in open G? Because we're all so used to, usually, I don't know if everybody out there is, but when I started playing a guitar tuned open G, I could really only play in the key of G, and a lot of times I still do it that way. I'll just, I'll capo to move my keys around, and that's just because for a lot of Delta Blues, those sounds down at the bottom of the neck, you know, all that... like walking blues. It's just, it's built that way. That's the way you want to do it. <clears throat> now, excuse me very much for that. Um, but learning the circle of fifths and applying that in practice, intentional practice, is going to help you um, to be able to learn the neck and learn scales in this tuning on the neck. So, I thought what we'd do right here is go through the first three chords of the circle of fifths, which the first one is C. So let me just start by showing you another place to say play C besides at the fifth fret, okay? Because you know at the fifth fret you can just bar all the chord, all the strings, and you've got a C. Now, what if you want to play a C up at say the eighth fret? All right, but let's look at C sevenths. We're going to look at seventh chords and what are called mixolydian scales, which are just scales that have the dominant seventh in them. All right, which is the same as a regular seventh chord, like that sound, that's the dominant seventh, dominant seventh. All right, so if you go up to the eighth fret, all right, and you take your first finger and go on strings one and two and bar right across the eighth fret, and then you take your second finger and go on string three at the ninth fret, and your third finger and go on string four at the 10th fret, just like an F in standard tuning, you got a C7, all right, if you do all that up at the 8th fret. All right, now, let's look at that scale that has the 7th in it, all right, and I'm going to play it with the slide. All right, so we start at 10, let me just play it for you. All right, now, Practicing that scale with just a slide is going to help you improve your facility to move around the neck with the slide, okay? Like... Like that, all right? Now, and granted, I'm only showing you one, uh, one place that you can play this scale, which there are many other places, and um, you can see those places... Um, as you go through the circle of fifths, you'll, you will kind of go, oh, okay, things will click. All right, so you start on the fourth string, and it's the tenth fret. Ten, third string, seven, nine, ten. Second string, eight, ten, eleven. First string, ten. All right, so. Excuse me. So. You know, just to get you started, here's a little lick that you can play there. Let me do that a little bit better for you. All right. You're basically outlining that seventh chord. You're doing it with the slide, okay? So, which is pretty cool. All right, and all that lick is, is you're gonna start on the first string, 10, Second string, 11, down to 8. Third string, you're going to slide into 9. Fourth string, slide into 10. All right. Now, you're going to say to me, well, okay, that's great, but how often can I go through that? Well, that's the thing. You're going to want to go on. I went on YouTube, and I pulled up a backing track in C. So what I do with this backing track a lot of times is I'll say, okay, I'm going to play it, and I'm just going to play this scale against it. So here we go.
a lot of what I'm doing is just saying, I'm going to say strictly to the notes that I have here on this page, well, the page that you can get if you go to Patreon, that I have to play with. And I'm going to go adhere strictly to these notes. All right? And you have to force yourself to be strict. Like, you don't want to slip down into old habits, like down to the fifth fret where you got... You know, that's really easy. But you want to force yourself to get out of your comfort zone intentionally. Now, the other concept you can apply to this is saying, I'm going to play certain rhythms of notes. All right? And I'm not going to stop that rhythm. So I read an article once um, written by um, one of the people that took lessons from Joe Pass. I don't remember the name of the guy who wrote it. But Joe Pass is a very uh, famous jazz guitar player. Uh, he did a great album called Virtuoso. I would recommend you go check that out. It's amazing. He did a follow-up album of that Virtuoso in New York, and just about anything he ever played on is just amazing, but he played a lot of solo stuff. And he would have his students do this, and he played a lot in positions. Now, he didn't play with a slide, of course, because he's a jazz guitar player, and there's only a few slide players out there that play jazz. And what he would say is, okay, this time, I'm going to play rhythm for you, and I want you to play all eighth notes, right? So it would be something like this. All right, you get the idea. Now granted, that didn't sound great. And that's because I myself, I don't, I don't do this enough, all right? Or you could do triplets, or you could do, we're just going to do, you know, single, you know, uh, quarter notes, quarter notes, eighth notes, triplets, sixteenth notes, whatever you want to do, all right? Um, the other thing you can do is say, okay, I'm going to make sure my slide plays all the notes on fret, let's just make it easy, let's say on fret 10, my side slide's going to play notes on fret 10, and the other notes I'm going to finger behind the slide with my fingers. But I'm not moving the slide off of fret 10. Well, you'd have to do fret 11 too with the slide, but you get the idea. And that will improve your facility as well because you'll be able to build up more speed that way if you have faster passages, you know. Um, which that wasn't, of course, fantastic, but it's, you know, it's an example of what you can do. You're going to get into your little woodshed, and you're just going to woodshed. All right, so those concepts, it means, so what have we covered so far? Let's just quickly run back through it. Intentional practice, find a blues backing track in whatever key you're working in, stick to the notes on the page that you have, and improvise over the track. Just Are you just going to improvise to get used to the scale, you know? Are you going to use just the slide? Are you going to do a combination of slide and fingers? Are you going to do triplets? Are you going to do eighth notes? Are you going to do single notes? Are you going to do, you know, sixteenth notes, quarter, whatever, whatever you're doing, you know? Um, so there you go. So now let's talk a little bit more about the circle of fifths. We've looked at C. Um, the next thing, the next note in the circle of fifths or chord is G. So we're going to look at G seventh, okay? And I want to take it to another position again. And again, this is going to help you get to know the neck because G is kind of a little too easy. Excuse me for knocking into stuff. Um, because G, you just do that. You know, there you go, right? Well, let's move G around a little bit. There's a position for the scale. 
All right, and all we're doing, we're going up to the fifth fret and we're starting on the fourth string. We're going five, seven. Third string, four, five, seven. Second string, five, seven, eight. All right. And that's what you're doing. So you could correspondingly find a, a you know, whatever, a backing track and play to G7. Now let me show you a lick in in G7, in G, that you can use, a little blues lick. Let's see here. All right. All that is, you're gonna go to the second string, you're gonna start at the eighth fret and slide down to the sixth. And then you're going to hit the third string and slide up to the seventh fret and down to the fifth. And then you're going to go down to the third fret and slide up and ha hit the, the fourth string at the fifth fret. So, all right, that's a very conventional sounding lick, but that's one you can work on. All right, then let's, let's just, I'm going to give you three of the positions three of the positions in the circle of fifths here. So let's look at D, all right? Now, oh, and I forgot to show you, where are you gonna play a G seventh? The G seventh is gonna be open fifth, open fourth. Take your second finger, put it on the fourth fret on the third string, and then bar your first finger across the first and second strings. <laughs> That's a G7th, all right? And now, to move forward, the D7th, we are gonna do the conventional. We're gonna bar at the fifth fret, except we're gonna take our third finger and put it up on the eighth fret, on the top string, on the first string, all right? Now, where's that D7 scale, okay? So the D7 scale goes seven, nine, on the third string, seven, eight, ten on the second string, nine, ten, twelve on the on the first string, so right? So there it is. Uh, that's D seven. Now what's a little lick that you can play? All right, again, very conventional sounding, but it uses the notes in the scale. Oh, excuse me, I played the major scale. And all that is, is you're gonna slide up to 10 on the second string. You're gonna play 10 on the first string and 10 on the second again. Like that. And then you're gonna go eight. And then you're gonna go, and this is all on the second string, and then seven, sliding up into it. And on third string, you're going to play seven. Excuse me. Man, I can't seem to get my P's and Q's together. So, again, what, what are we talking about doing? We're talking about taking this information, and we're going to do, use it to do intentional practice. What I do with this stuff is I will run through the circle of fifths just a lot of times, even without the slide, just to get to know the neck of the guitar, just playing the scales. Then I'll come back and maybe I'll pick one key. Let's say I'll pick the key of A and I'll find a backing track in the key of A that day and I solo to that backing track, but I'm very strict about what notes I allow myself to use on the guitar and whether or not I'm gonna let those notes change along with the chords, for instance, if you're playing, say, in C, you know, you've got C, and then you've got F and G, right? So you could say, okay, well, let's go up and find F on the circle of fifths. Let's find it together. Here we go. We're going to find it. It's here. It's here. I know it is because I, I put it on here. Here it is. It's the last the last note before you cycle back to C. Okay, so and we're going to say, what's a good scale for F? All right, well, it's going to start on the fifth string, 10, 12. 
Then we're going to jump to 7 on the 4th string, 7, 8, 10. And then on the 3rd string, 7, 8, 10. Right? So that one would give us a little bit of a workout on the lower strings. Now, I did do a lick in here that goes a little higher. All right? So this lick is... Excuse me. All right, all that is, that's F. We're going to go 10, 10, 10, 2, 3, 4 on the strings. And then we're going to go 9 on string 2 and 3, 8 on string 2 and 3, and then 8 on the top string, and then 10 on the second string, 10 on the third string. So. All right, it's kind of like a little pedal steel lick, just to kind of get you started. All right, so what you can say is, okay, I'm going to play a, the that scale over the F chord. And then, of course, I got the G chord. And you remember the G scale. We went over that. And then I'm going to play those notes over the G chord. That's intentional practice. You say, this is what I'm going to do. These are the rules that I'm going to follow. And then you practice that way. And if you do that, even just 10 minutes a day, or even just an hour a week, something like that, um, it will improve your playing. It will. And it'll make a lot of this stuff come to you a lot quicker because you'll have an idea of how the fingerboard lays out and where to find chords. So, um, like I said, over on Patreon, I'm going to have a, a complete printout of tabs that show the scales that I'm using, show the chords in the dominant seventh, circle of fifths, and show all of the scales and the licks, okay, that I'm using. Um, and if you have any questions over there, feel free to ask me. So this is a way to get you started, though. You know, go out. If you don't want to go to Patreon, go out and find a circle of fifths diagram. You can find them online. Find one online, pull it out, look at it, figure out what all the, the, the keys are on it, you know, all the notes. Um, it goes C, G, D, A, E, B, F sharp, D flat, A flat, E flat, B flat, and F. That's the circle of fifths as you go around it. And practice through them. Practice through them, guys. Anyway, I hope this has been helpful for you. I know it's kind of a big concept today. If you have any questions, hit me up. I love to answer questions. I love to hear from you guys. And I, I look forward to seeing all of you. And like I said, your support over on Patreon means the world to me because it helps me to keep on making all this wonderful content. So, hey, have a great week and Happy New Year, guys. Hey, folks, please drop me a comment and let me know where you're watching from. And if you like this content, please like and subscribe. And hey, thanks for watching.